But hey everyone, this video is about the different versions of HP 17 v2 financial calculator that have been released over the last three decades. And the 17 v2 series is my favorite financial calculator, and I'll talk more about why later. Uh, but the original model was released in 1990 as part of HP's Pioneer series, and it was codenamed Trader 2. Uh, being the successor to the original trader, the 17B. And the big difference from its predecessor was it added RPN mode. And 17B2 was the advanced financial calculator from the Pioneer series, in some ways the sister calculator to the 42S and 27S. But in 2003, HP stopped being able to source the Saturn processor from NEC, and it closed down its internal calculator group and outsourced its calculator design and manufacture to the Taiwanese company Kinpo Electronics. And the 17B2 uh, was replaced by a new gold version uh, called the 17B2+. Plus. As you can see, it had a slightly different look, although functionally it was very similar. Uh, and then in 2007, the Silver 17 B2 Plus was uh, released and it's still on the market. And so it's interesting to look at the changes that were made to the models over time. So physically, the original 17 B2 uh, used the same modular hardware platform as the other Pioneer calculators, such as the 42S. And there were t uh, this is the two-tone brown version. Uh, there was also a black model uh, that was functionally identical. Uh, and it has a real uh, metal plate around the display, which is different from uh, the faux metal plastic on the other models. Uh, the screens of all these models uh, display the same number of digits and uh, on all of them you can use the on key and uh, the plus and minus uh, to adjust uh, the contrast of the display. Uh, and the newer models have a better screen contrast, um, but not dramatically. And the keyboards are interesting because uh, they all have the same keys, but with a different uh, design execution. Uh, the keys on the original slope slightly forward uh, and have a really excellent uh, tactile feel to them. Uh, and there are three key sizes. Um, there's a large bar for the input key, which is particularly great if you're using RPN. Uh, and then there's a medium size buttons for the numbers and operations and uh, smaller buttons for the other functions. And the size reflects the relative degree to which the buttons are uh, pressed. And the labels for the shifted versions of the keys are really um, clearly printed uh, above the keys. With the gold uh, 17 B2 Plus, Kimpo made quite a few changes. So uh, they moved to a chamfered key design with um, sloping <clears throat> uh, faces on the keys. And but the slope is much more shallow than traditional HP calculators. Uh, the labels for the shifted functions are written on uh, the sloping faces uh, in this mustard color, which can be difficult to read. And they also get rid of the large input key, <clears throat> uh, a change that many people didn't like. And the keys on the keypad became uh, less horizontally aligned as you move down the keyboard. So um, the bottom the ones on the bottom row are kind of uh, aligned in a curve. And for some reason, they also decided to put a blue background on the input label, which is odd. Uh, the gold <clears throat> 17B2 Plus was designed around the same time as the 33S Scientific. Uh, they had that dramatic chevron-based design. And although it's not quite as out there as the 33S, you can see kind of some of the si same ideas in play. And to my eyes, the keyboard design was a step back from the original. Uh, but And overall, the calculator looks a bit... Um, cheap and plasticky. There's also um, the key action on the gold is uh, not bad, um, but the keys feel a little bit hollow, and it's my least favorite keyboard of the three. With the silver model, uh, they moved back to more of a traditional HP uh, keyboard design, and I don't think it's a coincidence that also in 2007 uh, the 35S was brought out, which also returned to HP's design roots. 
And the Silver 17B2 Plus kit, the chamfered keys, but there's um, much steeper sloping faces. And they also return the keys to the more traditional black color. Uh, they also <clears throat> return to the large input key, which was a welcome return, uh, and also horizontal alignment of each key uh, in a row. And the pale blue colour of the shift labels is certainly more attractive than the mustard colour, but uh, they can also be difficult to read against the black background. And to me, the action on the keys of uh, the silver model feel really good. Uh, they're a bit more clicky than the other models, um, and they're quite satisfying to use. And processor-wise, the original... Uh, use the HP's 4-bit uh, Saturn CPU, of course, and um, had uh, 8 kilobytes of memory. And interestingly, the newer models used a version of the 8502 chip, the same processor that was used in the Commodore 128. Uh, and they did bump up the memory, though, um, supporting 32Ks of memory. So all the models support basically the same functionality. The only major difference is the two newer models uh, support a currency conversion menu. Uh, and they all support both algebraic and RPN entries. So if we uh, switch to algebraic, uh, we can type in 2 plus 3 times 4. Uh, and if you watch my last video on the HP 71B, you might remember that HP patented a method called OPVS that substitutes algebraic terms as you type them. And so you would notice that the 2 plus 3 got substituted there as 5. <clears throat> and uh, so the typical order of operations where multiply is applied before addition uh, doesn't apply here. And this is something that you really need to be aware of if you're using algebraic mode on 17B2. Uh, and if you did want to end up with the result 14, uh, you'd have to enter the 3 times 4 in brackets. And so uh, we can switch to RPN mode, and to do the same calculation, we'd push those numbers onto the stack, and then uh, type multiply, and then plus. Uh, and unlike the HP 42S, the 17B2 series always displays uh, the menu on the bottom line, so you can never see both the X and Y registers in RPN mode. And if I was going to make one change to the device, it would be to support that. And so the way that the uh, currency menu works is you select two currencies you're interested in converting between at a rate. Uh, so let's pick uh, US dollars as currency one and euros as currency two. And we'll type in today's conversion rate, which is 0.95 euros to the dollar. Uh, and now if you wanted to convert $100 to euros, uh, you enter 100 uh, and select that as a US dollar amount, and then hit the Euros button. Uh, and similarly, if we wanted to convert 100 Euros uh, to US dollars, uh, we would do the opposite. Uh, so I guess it's useful, but um, it's also easy to implement this using a solver formula. And for me, the killer feature of the 17B2 series is the solver, uh, which is really useful if you're doing business calculations. So if we go into the solver, uh, we can see a simple example of that currency conversion formula, uh, USD equals euros divided by 0.95. Uh, and so once that's defined, uh, we can hit the calc button and uh, the solver creates menu items for each variable. Uh, so you can populate your known value uh, and then solve for your unknown. So here's a more complex example that calculates the Taylor series expansion of sine, and I talked more about uh, this example in my video about the HP 27S, and the solver was actually re-implemented in 17B2+, but it does support the same features as the original, such as conditionals and let and get. And so let's calculate the sine of uh, pi over 4 radians, or 45 degrees. Uh, so we'll take pi and divide it by 4 and set that as our x value. Uh, last is the number of terms to calculate, uh, so we'll set that to 10. And uh, the sign is calculating. Uh, yeah, so it's 0 0.707. 
And the newer self-implementation does have some bugs. So in this example, uh, which is a software formula from the technical applications book for the 27S and 19B, which I'll link to in the show description, uh, on the original, we can enter a number to find the prime factors. So let's say 70, which is uh, 2 times 5 times 7. Uh, we'll enter that in N, and then we can hit uh, factor button uh, to iterate through the factors and that so that works but if we try that on uh, the Kinpo uh, we only get uh, 2 and 7 and uh, so there are some fairly obscure cases where the solver on the newer models doesn't work in the same way and again I'll link to some forum com comments in the video description uh, which explain the differences in detail. And so the last solver example I'll show is just a speed test. And we've got a sigma expression that sums 250 numbers. Uh, so let's run them all at the same time. Yeah, and so interestingly, the original model is about twice as fast as the newer ones. And so in summary, it's interesting to see how the 17B2 was evolved over the years. And actually, overall, I prefer uh, the original. It's got the best keyboard, uh, the best implementation of the solver, and it's twice as fast as the newer models. Uh, if you do need currency conversion functions, you can always just implement them using a solver formula. Uh, but also the new uh, silver model is also really good uh, and its display is a little bit higher contrast than the original, although not dramatically. And for me, the original 17B2 is uh, probably uh, my favorite business calculator HP ever released. It's a beautiful device that supports RPN uh, and the solver, which I think most business users uh, would find more practical than the keystroke programming model on the 12C. And for the same reasons, the closest contender for me would be the 19B2, uh, which has a three-line display and more functions, uh, but its form factor is not as compact uh, and practical. Uh, the 17B2 also has great value now. You can pick up one for 20 or 30 US dollars on eBay, and it's a great option if you want to try a real HP RPN calculator with a great keyboard and the solver without uh, paying a lot of money. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful, and if you have, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to get alerted of new videos.